Hello and welcome to another edition of the Dualpreneur Virtual Mastermind. My name is Tara Jackson, aka Madam Money and founder of Dualpreneur, and I am your host. Are you a side hustle superhero? Do you work full time or part time and have a fabulous side hustle? Because you understand you need multiple streams of income because you got multiple streams of bills. Are you trying to keep your benefits and build your business too, boo? Are you addicted to the direct deposit like me? Well, that makes you a fabulous, brilliant dualpreneur, and I honor you for being here. Look, I want to tell you this quick story, right? So when I was going to my office, it was very stressful. I have an hour commute going to the office, work, you know, eight hours a day for a couple of days, and then I have to, you know, every day drive back. So that's two hour commute, working all day, and then come home, and then find time to work on my business, right? That was exhausting enough. And luckily I don't have kids to tend to. I don't have a spouse to tend to yet, yet, yet. Um, and, you know, but it was still exhausting. Well, when this uh, pandemic and the, um, the quarantine happened, I really got to focus more on my business and my side business. And I started making a lot more money on that. And I was able to do more work and get more clients. And it was been great. And my clients have been fabulous to work with. And we've been producing a lot of great things together. But I've noticed that I am working longer hours than I did when I was working the job, right? And you know, I will work until two or three o'clock in the morning and then I would wake up at eight because I have 9 a.m. conference calls for my business. And I have calls throughout the day and I have projects that I have to do throughout the day. And then I'm working until one, two, three o'clock the next morning. And I realized that I've been doing that for the past four to five weeks mm -hmm. to a point that one day my, you all remember, I had allergies so bad that it affected my eyes and I couldn't even be on camera because it was that bad. I had to get a sub host. Um, it's gotten to the point where I almost lost my voice, um, to the point where I would sleep all day, wake up, do the six o'clock. And then as soon as I'm done, go back to bed. And my body is just saying, chick, you crazy, right? My mind wants to continue to work, work, work and excited about the work, work, work. And I'm building my business and let's face it. I really like the, you know, the, the PayPal notifications and the direct deposit notifications that I'm getting. And it's not even coming from my job. It's coming from my business. I like that. I like being able to have the power to say, I'm going to work this long or I'm not going to work at all. I, I, I like it. But what I found is that I am, um, abusing my body. And I am forgetting that even as an entrepreneur, we need to take days off too, that we really need to focus on ourselves too. And so this session, I hope you all find value, but it's really about me. <laughs> this session is so for me because I need to be reminded of how I can do some self-care so I don't burn out, that you know, I don't burn both ends of the stick that I do take care of me so that I can continue to take care of my family and take care of my clients because I have to put my um, peribial, yeah, whatever, that word, oxygen mask on first so that I can save and help other people too. So I had to call my girl, Avalora. You know, with a name like Avalora, you know she must know her stuff, right? <laughs> so I had to call my girl, Avalora, like, girl, can you please, help me with this self-care thing, because even though I can tell people how they can do self-care, sometimes it's hard for us to do things for ourselves and to tell ourselves. It's just like a kid. When you tell your kids something and they don't think you know what you're talking about because they think you're crazy, but then a stranger tells them the same thing and it's like the gospel, like they never heard it before, like, but I just told you that yesterday. But sometimes our body and our brains work the same way. I can tell myself I need to take a break, I need to do this, but when someone from the outside tells me that and then tells me how, then my brain's like, oh, that person must know what she's talking about, just like my daggone son. That's another episode. But Avalora, I want to thank you so much for coming on and helping me and everybody else remember that as we are grinding and as we are hustling and as we are being dualpreneurs, even those with essential um, jobs that still have to work and those that may be home and we're really focusing on our jobs that we still need to look at ourselves and do some self-care. So thank you for coming on. I love you 
and I appreciate you, but tell us about you because you're freaking awesome, but tell us about you and then give us some tips on how we can do this soulful self-care because I need it really bad. Thank you so much, Tara, for having me and inviting me on. And, you know, as you just really highlighted, um, soulful self-care is always important, but even so more now um, during this pandemic, um, because anytime we have things that really stretch us and take us outside of our comfort zone and we have this level of uncertainty that we're all going through right now, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. And so, you know, a lot of us are feeling really uncertain. The bottom is just dropping out. We don't, you know, every day we're getting different updates. We're on social media. We're watching the news and we're just being inundated, um, you know, with all these things. And so soulful self-care right now is probably one of the most important things that you can do for yourself. Um, and I'm going to talk more about that. But I do want to tell you my story because it's really how I came to self-care. I think it's one of those things that uh, we talk about, but it's not until you have your own personal uh, experience that it really hits home for you and you really understand it and you really get it. And that's why it's become a topic that I speak about um, really all over the world. Um, because of my own personal experience and because I've lived it, I know what it's like, I know how important it is. And so I'm sharing it with you. Um, and so my background is actually in mental health, um, in counseling and social work. I got my bachelor's degree in psychology, master's degree in social work from Howard University. And so in those circles, we actually always talked about self-care. Um, it's become a hot topic now, but We've always talked about it in the mental health field, um, but I think even we're going through it. You see a lot of mental health professionals because, you know, some of us are essential and some of you really are on the front lines. I'm busier now more than ever. <laughs> you know, I was telling Tara, I lost speaking engagements, but I picked up so many clients. And so I have had to be really good about practicing my own self-care right now. Um, during this pandemic. Um, but one of the things that happened for me is I was actually uh, a program director at an outpatient mental health clinic here in Maryland. And if you know anything about the industry, you know, one of the things about me is that I came into this industry because I wanted, to, I genuinely wanted to help people, right? I wanted to help people grow and change their lives and be the best versions of themselves. And what happened is when I got into this industry, you know, here I am, I'm counseling others, um, you know, uh, facilitating after school programs and all these things. Um, but one of the things is that I realized the limitations of the system. And instead of really helping people to heal and grow and change their lives, I realized that the system was really only set up to help people to maintain their dysfunction. And that's not what I had signed up for. And so one of the things that happened to me was in my day job, when I realized that I was limited into how I could really help people and what I could do, I started getting depressed. I started feeling hopeless. I started feeling like, what is my purpose here? Why am I here if I can't really help people? I'm, all I'm doing is putting a Band-Aid on stuff. I'm not, I'm not fixing anything. And that went on for a while, you know, really just feeling that way and starting to feel worse and worse and worse. And the irony of it was, here I am supposed to be helping people and I'm here counseling other people and helping them, but I couldn't help myself. I'm over here getting more and more depressed. You know, the more useless I was feeling, the more hopeless I was feeling because I wasn't fulfilling a purpose. And um, it finally just got to the point where really I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I ended up confiding in one of my friends and she said, Ava Laura, I have this woman's retreat. Why don't you come on out and just, you know, just, just join us and just be here with us. And it was really one of the best decisions that I ever made. At that point, I had never even heard of a woman's retreat because mind you, we talk about that now, but this was like 20 years ago. So I didn't even know what that was. But at that point, if she had said, if you want to go skydiving, I, I would have gone because I was at my wit's end. So I was like, Tara, like my body was just like, what the hell are you doing? So I would have done anything she said at that point. And so I went to the women's retreat and I, it, it was the most amazing thing. You know, really what happened for me is that through that retreat experience, I realized just how out of harmony with myself that I actually was. And I hadn't realized it because a lot of times when you're in the thick of it, you don't even understand just how off balance you are until you can kind of see your way out. 
And that's what happened. So I went to the women's retreat and it was great. Got back to doing yoga and meditation and spending time in nature, you know, all these things that were important. And I literally just had like a breakdown. I literally broke down and, um, you know, just found my knees, you know, found myself crying on my hands and knees, crying out to God. Like you, you just, you got to get me out of here. I can't do this no more. This is, this is too much. I can't do it. I was, just, you know, like the movie, I was like, get me out, just get me out. I don't care. Just get me out. And, um, and that's what happened. And I felt good. You know, when you do that ugly cry, you let everything go. You feel good. You're like, yeah, okay. I feel better. And then I realized I was like, oh shoot, I got to go back to work on Monday. <laughs> and and that's what I did you know I was a trooper because I was committed to the cause even though I wasn't happy I was committed to this job that was not committed to me and um and so I went into work on Monday and I get to work and everything is business as normal and then uh, my boss calls me to his office and he says you know Ava Laura he said you're great you're wonderful I love having you but I gotta let you go and I said, wait, what? What? And he was like, I got to let you go. And he gave me severance pay. And, and that was it. And I was not a dualpreneur then, y'all. I was not no dualpreneur, okay? I only had a job. <laughs> so it was, you know, I was, I was shocked. Because here I am, overachiever, perfectionist, you know, go hard or go home. So when I commit to something, I'm really committed. I had never been fired from anything in my life. So I was shocked. Ego was in an uproar. How could he? I can't believe he would do this to me. And then my spirit kicked in like, Ava Laura, why are you upset? This is what you prayed for. So what you going to do about it? And that really became my mission of what am I going to do? And so I did something that, you know, I know we're, we're in this stage in our lives where most of us say we can't do this, but I literally took what I call my six month healing sabbatical. Six months. And I took that time out for myself and I did the work. Who am I? Why am I here? That's when I did my life coaching certification. That's when I learned Reiki. That's when I got counseling. I took six full months out just for me. And then at the end of that six months, I opened up Ava Laura's Healing Center where I have been working now. And that was back in November uh, 2005. So almost 15 years ago now. And it was one of the best decisions that I ever made because before I started my business, I took that time out for myself and really got to know myself and really healed and really took that time out. Because the truth is that I know now that I didn't fully realize then is that I was burnt out. I was burnt out. And so I'm showing up at work every day, but I was like the walking dead. I wasn't really there. I was just going through the motion. And so I had to take that time. I had to take that time. And so that's when I really realized how just important self-care was when I totally burned myself out doing work that didn't feed me, that I didn't like, that I didn't want to do anymore. But I was so committed to the job because I, I'm that person, you know, go hard or go home. I'm an overachiever. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I was so committed to that job. I was more committed to that job than I was committed to myself. And so one of the things, I, you know, I have three major tips for you, but one of the things that I really learned about self-care is that the first word in self-care is self. In order to truly practice self-care, you have to know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you really can't practice self-care. Because one of the things that happens is we kind of look at other people. Well, Tara's doing this, so let me do that. Ayana's doing that, but let me do that. But what if that doesn't work for you? You know, some people need eight hours sleep. Some people need 10 hours of sleep. Some people are great with five hours of sleep, right? Some people need to eat, you know, three meals a day. Some people do better with five, six smaller meals a day, right? So some people like high intensity exercise. Some people prefer just to do yoga or just meditate or do Tai Chi or something like that. So one of the things that I learned about self-care is that you got to know yourself because in order to do what's going to work best for you, you have to know what works for you. Otherwise, you're not really properly taking care of yourself. 
So that's the first thing. So you really got to take some time. And during this quarantine, honestly, this is a great time to get to know yourself. You got nothing else to do. I mean, how much Netflix can you watch? And I, and I love Netflix, but I'm getting tired of Netflix. So this is the perfect time to get yourself go, get to know yourself, exploring different hobbies, things that you've always wanted to do, you know, maybe creative things, you know, taking different online classes or workshops, new skills, but doing something different, doing something that you've never really had time for that you've always wanted to do. And now you have the time to do it. Get to know yourself, taking time out for daily reflection. You know, how often, how often do you get to do that? Just take time out for reflection. Take time out to meditate. I teach meditation everywhere. Um, taking time out to meditate. So this is a good time to get to know yourself. So the first thing is you got to know yourself. The second thing about self-care, and this is so important, and I see people misuse this all the time. The thing about self-care is that in order for your self-care to be effective, your self-care has to match the level of your stress. So what that means is if your stress is at a level 10, that means your self-care needs to be at a level 10. Otherwise, if your stress is at a level 10 and your self-care is only at a five, now you're doing superficial self-care. So if your self-care is at, if your stress is at a 10 and you like, oh, I'm going to get a mani-pedi, what the heck is that going to do? Nothing. It's not going to do anything. And so what happens is a lot of times we're doing superficial self-care. We're putting band-aids on. It feels good in a moment, but then after that moment is over, it's done because you really didn't give yourself what you needed. So your self-care has to match the level of your stress. Sometimes self-care means you need a life coach. It means you need therapy. It means you need a time out. It means you need a six-month sabbatical like I took. Because you're so far off, you're so out of harmony with yourself that doing those little daily things of taking a bubble bath, getting a mani-pedi, going out to brunch with your friends is not going to be enough. You need a whole reset. So your self-care needs to match the level of your stress. So really look at your life and what you're going through. And so what that means is your self-care will fluctuate. You know, maybe this month you need to up your self-care because you're more stressed out. But when things get back to normal, you don't have to do as much because you're not as stressed. So your self-care will change based on what's going on in your life. And a lot of us, again, we kind of get into this routine where we keep things the same. We don't change according to what our needs are. So don't fall into superficial self-care. The more stressed out you are, the more self-care you need. So that's the second thing that I offer you. And then the third thing that's really important is that you absolutely have to schedule your self-care. It is non-negotiable. You have to schedule your self-care. Your self-care is the best health care. You would not go a day without washing your, uh, brushing your teeth. And I was about to say taking a shower, but since we've been in quarantine, some of y'all been a little suspect. So maybe y'all won't say that. <laughs> if you by yourself, some of y'all are not taking a shower every day. But you wouldn't go a day without brushing your teeth. Please tell me you're brushing your teeth every day. Please tell me you're brushing your teeth. You got to schedule your self-care. A lot of times what happens is we look at our day and we say, oh, I have this meeting here. Oh, you know, I got this Zoom here. Because how, how many of y'all are Zoomed out? I ain't never had so many Zoom meetings in all of my life. <laughs> So you look at your schedule and you like, oh, I got this Zoom meeting here. Oh, I got that here. Oh, I got to get the kids here. Oh, I got to homeschool here. Oh, I got to cook here. But where's your self-care in that? The thing that you have to do that is so important is you actually need to schedule your self-care first. And then everything else needs to go around that. Schedule your self-care first and everything else needs to go around that. So let me tell you what that looks like. I am a night owl. I know I'm not going to bed early. I am not going to bed before 12, 1 o'clock. It's, it's not going to happen. Unless I'm sick, it's not going to happen. So what that means is 
I don't schedule meetings until at the earliest 10 a.m., but more than likely 11. And I don't schedule my first client before 12. Because I learned a long time ago, I tried very early on my practice to have 9 a.m. clients and I was not showing up as my best. And I said, no, we ain't, we're not doing this no more. So I created my schedule that works best for me, how I can best serve. Okay. I do have to interject. <laughs> Guilty as charged. So I will be adjusting my calendar and not being available at 9 a.m. because it killed me this morning. So valid point. Yes. And that comes again with knowing yourself. Some people are early risers, right? So they'll, they'll be happy having 8 a.m. meetings, 9 a.m. meetings. My first meeting is not, usually speaking, if you look at my calendar, 11 a.m. is my first meeting and my first client is 12. And then I see clients later. So I'll have my last client at 6, 6.30, 7 o'clock. That works for my schedule. For some people, they'd be like, uh-uh, I'm not working that late. I'm fine with that because I'm not going to see anybody at nine o'clock. It's not happening. I'm because an early eight, riser. <laughs> so then you would flip that. Yeah, I'm an early riser. And before this all happened, I would uh, wake up at 5 a.m. So I would do my daily routine because I scheduled the care. So I had my spiritual practice from five to six. I had my physical body where I'm doing my exercise from six to seven. And then, you know, I'm just milling about, getting ready for work. And then, you know, I'm leaving out the door about 8.30 to be at work by 9. And so now with all this, you know, quarantine and all that, I get up about 7.30, start my stuff 8, 9, you know, and then I'm working my business for my eight hours. So I, I have my schedule structure from 11 to 7. There you go. I work on my business and my nonprofit yep. during that time frame. Yep. And it's working beautifully and I'm not stressed out. I'm not overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's working. So you had to adjust your schedule. Yeah. And absolutely. that's, again, that's a, a lot of times what we don't do. We try to operate the same, but you have to go with what is happening in your life right now. So you have to adjust. And so your self-care plan, as I call it, it pivots. It does not stay the same. So what yes. I'm hearing or what I'm, what's coming into my brain is that I have to, I have to schedule what my office hours are going to be. And I have to respect my office hours mm -hmm. because I've been extremely disrespectful mm -hmm. of my office hours. The entire day has been my office hours mm -hmm. and I have to be respectful of my office hours. So it's not just when my clients can get a hold of me, but when I need to stop and allow my brain to rest so that I can, okay. I, yes. I know this, but I just needed to be reminded. Yes. And I'll start And again, you can build that in because you know yourself and you know what you need. So one of the things that I do is, when, even when I schedule clients, I have at least half an hour between each client. I won't do back-to-back -back clients. And sometimes I'll give my hour in between because sometimes I just need to meditate. I need to go outside and take a walk. I need to take a quick nap, right? If I'm looking at my day and I have all this going on, so I'll intentionally leave breaks in between for myself. But that comes back to knowing me. If I got, okay, I said I got five clients today. I'm going to need a nap. So let me build that in. Or I'm looking at my schedule, so I have all this going on. I can't schedule any more people today. They got to go on tomorrow, the next week, or what have you. I know for me, like today, I noticed um, that I'm going to have to make adjustments again, even to my schedule for next week, because I find myself like getting off track. Oh, email came in. Let me go check that. So now I'm even structuring it even more to where I have it scheduled. No, this is the time you will check your emails so that I don't get off track with what I need to be doing to be productive in my business and generate activities that's going to bring in the money. So I have to even keep myself focused and not be a squirrel running off to mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time I hear the dean or I mm -hmm. see <laughs> Hear that notification. And again, and, and here's what I want y'all, and, and so I don't want y'all to look at me like, oh, I need to do that too. I'm not that structured. If I did that, I would drive myself crazy.
because I'm gonna look at email off the whatever time I said emails. So that wouldn't work for me. I'd rather just give myself a pocket and say in in this time I can do whatever I want. So again, that's where it has to work for you. It has to be what is going to work for your personality and what's going to work for your lifestyle. And that requires taking the time out to really get to know yourself, know what you need, know what makes you tick, know what pisses you off, you know, know what doesn't work for you. You need to know all of those things. And that's how you can really create your self-care schedule. And then within that schedule, what's so important is what I say is you have to have daily, weekly, and monthly activities, right? Daily, weekly, and monthly self-care activities. So there's never a day that goes by that you're not practicing some sort of self-care. And sometimes what happens is we look at self-care. A lot of times when I talk to people, they're like, well, you know, I thought for self-care, I had to like go to the gym. I had to have a gym membership or take a vacation. Self-care does not have to cost any money. It really doesn't. It's about you. And so a daily self-care thing could be one of the things that I do is I practice gratitude, I pray, I meditate. None of that costs me any money. That's every single day. And then somewhere in there, I love to drink tea. And like that's, that's self-care for me, just sitting down with my cup of tea. I might go and just sit outside and watch the birds or whatever. I mean, it's just, it's grounding. It centers me. That's self-care for me. Is, is vodka self-care? Is what? Is vodka self-care? <laughs> Don't judge How me. much vodka you having? I didn't, I didn't want to go there, but you know, you got your, you were saying, I'm sipping on my, I was waiting, okay, but you got tea, so I'm just saying, don't judge. It depends on how much vodka we talking about. Okay, what time? <laughs> I can quickly go left somewhere else. <laughs> Especially right now while people are quarantining. Right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so you got to have some limits on that. So have your daily activities. And those are simple things um, that could also be exercise. Um, your daily activities. And then you have your weekly activities. Like what's something that you could do once a week? Like before this quarantine once a week something that I did I would go to brunch with friends or go out to dinner or you know something like that maybe it would be now just like you have a fun zoom party or you have a you know game night or something like that but something that you can do once a week um and then you have your monthly activities and your monthly activities might be that's where you go get a massage or that's where you get your mani-pedi or you get a reiki treatment or things like that so you might splurge a little but you always want to have something that you're doing every single day so daily weekly and monthly self-care and if you do that what's going to happen is it creates a buffer for you so when you have when you do become stressed and you will because that's life there's always going to be stress there's always going to be problems there's always things going on you have a buffer so you don't get so crazy and so out of pocket because there's something there protecting you from that stress. So you might get a little bit more stressed and because there's more going on and then you say, okay, now I got to pick up my self-care. So the daily, the weekly, and the monthly that I was doing was not enough. I got to step it up and do more right now. So that's how that works. Make sense? Can y'all do that? <laughs> Some of us, we have to do it. There's no choice, right? <laughs> and what I would say, like really to create that schedule is just to start brainstorming things that you love to do and, and, and then looking at like where you want to prioritize and kind of how you want to structure that, get that into your schedule. So you might be like, I love to dance. Okay, great. Where is that going to go in your self-care schedule? I love to watch movies. Where is that going to go into your self-care schedule? So start to just brainstorm a list of things that you love and then you can create that. Yeah. For me, if I don't do it, you, you don't want me. I'm like the Hulk. You can always tell if I have not been doing my self-care practices because I'm the Hulk, like <laughs> for real, like a whole different mean person. And in order for me to show up and be authentic, I have to take care of myself first. Yeah. So I got a question for you and I know we're not on questions yet, but <laughs> what I do like to do, I like to work. I, I, I look forward. I like to work. That's the challenge. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is, is that I may have an uh, addictive behavior, whereas I don't know when to cut it off, mm -hmm. but 
I, that work is not what I'm doing right now. I should say, as far as the work that I do for my clients, it's not stressful. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the amount that's coming in can be overwhelming, Mm -hmm. but even when I'm watching a movie, I'd rather be working and watching the Netflix on my computer and watching the movie or with my laptop and watching the movie, but I like to work because it stimulates my mind. And that's what I think my mind is looking. I can have 12 browsers open and do multiple things at one time. Um, but I, I, I guess at some point my brain needs to calm down. And that's why sleep would be an issue because if your brain is always working, 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 it doesn't know how to shut down. So how do I meditation? Oh, meditation. You have to shut it down. You have to give it a rest. Okay. It's, it's, it's just, it's like, um, anytime when you do too much of one thing, you got to find a way to balance it out. Otherwise then you're out of harmony. So you got to balance that out. So you might like to, I love my clients, but I realized I can't have five clients in a day. It's just not going to happen. I can't do it. In order for me to really give my all and be present with my clients, I don't need to see that many people a day. And I love them and they're amazing. And I feel great when I'm working with them and helping with them. But then I realize afterwards, if I do too much, then I feel drained. So you got to find the balance to that. You got to turn your brain off. You got to do some meditation, go for a walk, some mindless activity, you know, puzzle pieces, play a silly game, like something to just kind of turn it off and just to kind of relax and be in that moment. Necessary. (laughs) Okay. Um, you know, uh, use the whale music to break down the stimulation. If she what? likes it, you what can use that? white noise. It's, it's, oh. um, there's different type of white noise. So it could be nature sounds. It, it's, you know, um, like the spa music that we call it. I use it a yeah. lot. Like when I'm doing Reiki treatment, spa music, I have a guided meditation that I teach. My clients love that. Um, so I actually have like a digital download meditation. Um, and it's just, guided in it. I'm, all you do is listen to my voice and do exactly what I say. And it teaches you how to relax your body. Okay, great. I might need, I'm going to need that. Cause I used to have the meditation thing that, and I used to do the meditation and a guided meditation on there. And when I made the time and that's the whole thing is when I had time, you know, I have more time than anything, any time right now. I'm just not making the time. I'm making the time to work more. Now I need to start making the time to work and relax and have a balance. That's why the schedule. And again, you schedule your self-care first and everything else goes around that. Most of us do the opposite. We schedule everything else that we got to do. And then we like, oh, I don't have time. But you have time for all these other things. So why don't you have time for your self-care? So you're doing it backwards. I love it. I know now what I'm going to need to do. And this weekend is going to be my special project. Um, cause what I would do is just, I would work on different projects and I didn't have a schedule of really the projects I would work on it, get it done or whatever, but you're right. If I work with too many people and one day I'm completely drained, like I was supposed to talk to someone who's very significant in my life after everything was done. And by the time it got to after this, you know, around seven 30, I was all talked out. I just did not want to hear the sound of my voice anymore. <laughs> And I just did not feel like talking anymore. And so that does a disservice to the people that care about us when they want a little bit of time and we're drained giving it to everybody else. That happens a lot for me. I mean, and even, you know, because I'm dating and then I have, you know, people like, oh, can you talk? And I'm like, nah, I'm not talking to anybody. No, I'm done. I'm all talked out for the day. I've had, you know, especially if I've had a speaking engagement or so, I'm done. I'm not talking to anybody. So you have to place those limits. And, and again, I can look at my schedule and almost, and, and because I got it down to a T, I know myself, I know once this, this last person here, that's it. I'm done for the night because I, I know my cutoffs now. Uh, the only, the other thing that's helping me that I'm helping to prepare for my self care is I, I got, I got a virtual assistant. I had to get a virtual assistant because a lot of my extra, thank you. Thank you very much. 
Yes. A lot of my extra work that I was doing that kept me up later at night was a lot of the administrative stuff. Mm hmm um, yep. because I'm doing the money making stuff during the day, but then when everything quiets down, I still have administrative things that yes. needed to be done. So that was keeping me up more. And so today had a meeting with my virtual assistant to take on some things. And I got so excited. I was like, okay, and now I want you to do this, 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 this. And, and I said, you know, tell me when, um, I'm out, out of my ass. Cause you know, I'm only paying her. So <laughs> tell, tell me when you like chick, you ain't paying me for that. You know, yeah. just let me know. Cause yeah. I'm gonna keep asking. Right. Cause now yeah. I'm excited. Right? But that's important. I'm glad you said that because one of the things is a part of our self care is asking for help. And you know, most of us, especially, you know, black women, I'm gonna call us out. We got that strong woman, black, you know, black woman complex. And we just feel like we have to do it all and nobody else can do it like me. And if I don't do it, it's not going to be right. So I can't give it to anybody else. Or I asked somebody to do it in the past and they said they were going to do it and then they let me down. So I'm not going to ask anybody ever again. I just got to do it all myself. Can you like get out of my business around? <laughs> I have learned the hard way on that. You have to allow people an opportunity to do well. We assume that because someone did it bad in the past or they did us wrong, no, you have to give somebody else the opportunity. And most of the time when I give some, give another opportunity, they exceed my expectations. Mm -hmm. And so, yes. I've and learned. they'll do it in a different way. And it may not be the way that you would have done it, but it's like, oh, I learned something. That's actually cool. Okay. Yeah, I, I can admit today I had an awesome, her name is Ebony. I had an awesome conversation and she also builds website as well. And we were talking mm -hmm. about, you, you know, doing some collaborations and we're both very busy. And even though we may not be able to work together, you know, on some projects, cause she's busy and I'm busy. We still oh. talked about strategy. We talked about, you know, processes and we learned something today that's going to help mm -hmm. both of our businesses. So even when we were trying to figure out how we can synergize, we found ways to streamline processes and make mm -hmm. money from those processes. So it's really mm -hmm. great when you do ask for help because you may not get the help you need, you want right then and there, but you may find other things that's going to help you or they'll give you advice or whatever that's going to help you. So that has been really awesome for me to take the time out to really um, decide that I'm gonna ask for help. Mine is I'm a control freak and I'm very clear about that. Um, and you're right, you know, nobody, it, nobody's the best employee except yourself, right? Cause I don't <laughs> wanna give it to somebody and then they mess it up and then I gotta go behind them and fix it. It kind of defeats the purpose. But I can't think like that because there could be somebody that will do it and they did it better than me yes. and my lifesaver. Yes, absolutely. Because I mean, talking about websites, I mean, one of the best things I ever did, because I paid all this money for my last site and it was old, you know, I mean, technology is changing so much. Um, I've probably done it about five, six years ago. So I paid, that's websites cost a lot more money. So I paid all this money for it. And I was tired of it. It was on WordPress. I did work because I was like, oh, WordPress is great. And you know, if there's an issue, you can fix it. I was never fixing anything. I don't have time for that. So here I am, I got this WordPress site and I'm thinking, okay, yes, I know how to make changes, but I don't want to do it and I don't have time. One of the best things I did was got somebody to redo my site. They do everything. I don't have to do anything. All I got to do is, okay, add this. I need this. And they do it. I'm like, thank you, God. That was the best decision I ever made. Mm -hmm. So and I, and that's what I do for other people. But sometimes I need to be done for myself in other <laughs> aspects and other, you know, aspects, the administrative, like you still have, yeah. like we were talking about yesterday, we had Kendall on and he was talking about how you still need to hunt for food and you still need to farm and cultivate your existing clients. Right. So I love farming and, and cultivating my existing clientele, but I still got to hunt for food. I still need to promote. I still need to advertise, mm -hmm. email marketing, social media marketing. Mm -hmm. And although I can do it all myself, Absolutely. I don't want to, which goes back to what, um, what uh, what's his name? Trevor said, what Trevor said, the answer to who doesn't have to be you. Exactly. And so- you just know it has to be done. It has to be done. Do and we find the person that can do yeah. it. And it doesn't Absolutely. have to be me that's doing it. Absolutely. That is self-care. That is 
absolutely self-care. And again, like because a lot of times self-care is like, oh, get a mani pedi, take a bubble bath. That's all great in it's self-care. But sometimes you need more than that. Mm -hmm. And getting help is a huge part of it. Also, automating systems. That's another, God help me, that was one of the best things I also did too. But now everybody can go, they want to schedule stuff because everybody wants to DM me. And, I, and that's great and that's wonderful. That's one of them good problems. Everybody wants to DM you, they want you to go to my website. You want to schedule an appointment, you can go there, you can pay, you can set up the time, everything. I don't have to do nothing, but show up. <laughs> Best thing in the world. Best thing in the so world. yeah, self-care sometimes too, for many of us, it really is thinking outside of the box. But again, that's why it goes back to knowing you, knowing who you are, knowing what you need, knowing what's important. And then you can determine a method for accomplishing that. Um, because that is self-care. That is making sure that you're running smooth, effectively, that you have everything that you need to really show up powerfully, authentically, and really in purpose. That's so great. And we got to wrap it up because you know we could probably spend another hour on this topic but it's so it's so relevant to the time now and it's so crucial and important for us to pay attention to this so that we can continue to thrive and keep dualpreneurs in business because you can't stay in business if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not healthy um so you know especially when you're a solopreneur that if you don't work you don't eat you know what I mean? Yep. It's not like you have five employees that can pick up where you left exactly. off. Exactly. So this whole week for me has been risk management. What if I get sick? What yep. if something happens and I can't work? What if I want to take a vacation? What if I just don't feel like working? What am I going to have in place that's still going to be able to farm and cultivate as well as hunt for food for me in my stead? And that's what being a business owner is really about when you convert the mindset from being a solopreneur to being a business owner. A business owner has employees. An entrepreneur could be a solopreneur. So that means you are your boss. You're just, you're self-employed. You're employed for yourself. So me, I want to own the business. So that means I might have to have either employees or subcontractors that can still keep the business going. Because really business owners, true successful business owners, they're not doing the work. Mm -hmm. They hire the people to do the work. Mm -hmm. They're cultivating new business. They're building relationships. They're helping it to grow, getting you know contracts and all of that. And they have people doing the work. And while we're doing the work, we still need to start thinking about it. But we can't think about you know growing the business as a one-man operation or a one-woman operation because that's not self-care. Mm -hmm. Self-care is figuring out how can I keep this going when I don't have to kill myself? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. So there, Avalor, there's, there's so much to it, yeah. Avalor, so <laughs> if people wanna work with you or download, you know, like I need to download that meditation thing or um, follow you and learn more about you, where can they go, website, social media? Absolutely. I'm very easy to find. I'm the only Avalora. So you literally type in A-V-A-L-A-U-R-A. -A -A, I will pop up. I'm Googleicious. So you can go to avalora.com. That is my hub. Um, you can get, I have a bunch of digital products um, and I actually had a bundle sale um, for all of my digital products um, during this time because a lot of people just, you know, sitting, have time. So now you have the time to do this work. So you got time to meditate. You got time to learn how to wrap your hair. You got time to listen and journal. Right. So all of these things that I've been offering. Um, so I do have a bundle pack available for that. You can DM me for that link. Um, but otherwise, you can go to abelora.com. Um, you can request a consultation to work with me. Um, you can. Yep. That's that's that is me on um, social media. <laughs> So like, I'm um, finding you now. I'm going to talk to you now. And yes, you can find me. All of my links are on my website as well. But again, if you just type in Ava Laura, I will literally pop up. So you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm pretty much everywhere. Yeah, right. um, yes. <laughs> I am everywhere, thanks to my team. Uh, so yeah, so avalora.com and request the consultation and I would be happy to work with you. Thank you so much. We're gonna now open it up. I don't know if you all have any other questions for Avalora or any comments um, right now with the ride or die chicks. 
Um, not really um, a question, but like, I just understand what spoke to me about your journey is that six month kind of healing time. Um, Cause about two years ago, that's what happened. And God was like, sit down, you're doing too much. You're all over the place. And that's how, the, that's how my business was actually born. It was developing these capacities that I felt like I could fix it. Cause I think at that point in my life, I was feeling like a failure yes. in many areas as a wife, as a mom. And just as a woman. And so, yeah, I can attest to that six months. I don't know what it is about six months, but Jack. Powerful. Like a and I didn't plan it that way. Person. I didn't say I'm going to take six months. It just ended up being six months. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, so I told my clients. That's true. That's true because I gave myself six months to grow my business. See? Um, so and I have a six month goal. And, you know, when I reach that six months, I'm reassessing. Um, but I'm going to do the next six months. So, um, yeah. So usually my clients, when they work with me, I say, okay, a minimum of three months. And it usually ends up being, and I say three months because it's bite size, you know, so we can, right. okay, I can do that. And then it usually ends up being six months. So <laughs> we do two periods of three months. Yeah. That's so cool. yeah, there is power in that. I have a question for you. So, yes, um, is your business like traditional type coaching where people can come through their insurance and they pay you or is it um uh, more like coaching services how does that part work so it's holistic um okay. no insurance covers life coaching okay period um and so because my background is mental health and counseling um anytime you work with me you're going to get that as a part of it um and so one of the advantages of working with me that my clients really like is that I have the traditional background and I have the holistic background. So I am a Reiki master teacher. I teach Reiki. I offer Reiki. So you get the energy healing part of it because for me, a lot of us, particularly if we have a lot of emotional pain, um, a lot of emotional things that we have not dealt with, if we have a lot of traumas, and a lot of us do, um, and we don't even realize, we don't even think about, we're just carrying it around with us, and because it just becomes a part of who we are, and it defines us, we don't even look at it as being traumatic or being an issue when it affects everything that you do. Because so many people are really making decisions from their trauma and not their true selves. So... I can really combine that counseling background with the coaching as well and give you what you need. And so it's one of those things, you might come to me for coaching, but you don't get a combination of all of those things because that's what you need. Awesome. Go ahead. Um, how would another coach collaborate with you? Holla. <laughs> Listen, one word. That's not like clear. And and that can happen because you know, with even with some of my <laughs> clients, some of, and I don't deal with the mental health issues. There's certain things that I just don't deal with, right? Yeah. So if, for example, I had a clients that were my business clients, but they were married, right? Mm -hmm. So I do couples as, counseling as, as I'm building, help them build their business together. They have some marital issues that I am, not a, I am not a marriage counselor, nor do I play one on TV. So I, I collaborate with a marriage counselor and they handle that side and then we communicate, the counselor and I communicate. If it's mm -hmm. a mental health issue, I don't deal with a mental health issue. I'm not a mental health professional, nor do I play one on TV. I probably need one. So I will collaborate and we just, we, we have conversations. Like if Avalor and I were talking, and I wanted to refer a client to you, I would say, look, this is my client. This is what I'm working with. This mm -hmm. is what I need you to help work with. And when we have the conversation, we make sure that we don't step on each other's toes mm -hmm. and that we have frequent, frequent conversations about the client and their progression and then how we can support each other by helping them. So yeah. collab coaching, just because you work with one coach doesn't mean you can't work with other coaches. That's what I think a lot of people say. Well, I'm working with a business no, coach. I well, have they, a lot of that. They, um, they may be because... working with you on one aspect of your business, but there could be right. another aspect that's not being touched on right i mean and even because i do the reiki piece of it as well and that and that really the energy healing so a lot of my clients they might have a counselor already and they'll come to me for reiki and their counselors are coming to me for reiki as well and to learn reiki um, because a lot of um, my mental health colleagues are learning now reiki so they can implement it and add it to their business to make their business model more holistic 
So now it's really shifted. So I have a lot of clients who are coming to me for coaching um, and emotional healing, um, couples counseling and all of that. But now I'm also working with a lot of mental health professionals to help them to have a more holistic practice as well. I love Reiki. That's the best thing that was ever created. I, I agree. And a lot of people don't know that it's great distance and people don't, you know, so I have a lot of clients now because they were used to coming in and seeing me. I'm like, you can do a distance. I don't know about that. They do one session and they're like, oh, this is great. Okay. <laughs> oh, look, I might have to put that on my calendar. I need a Reiki session. Reiki is awesome. I haven't done the distance, but I've, I've had a lot of energy and body work and all that kind of stuff, but I haven't done the distance. It works. I mean, uh, uh, every practitioner is not created equal. So I always have to say that. Um, but if you have a good practitioner, it really should feel the same as if they're right there. Yeah, I mean, I attest to it. I think it's, you know, I think it's great. I, I was a massage therapist a while back, and then I couldn't cleanse properly. So I yep. had a hard time getting rid of people's energy. Yep. And I was depressed and like, cause I would pick it up. I remember there was yep. this young pregnant girl that I was working with and she had just gotten kicked out of her home and she didn't have any family and wasn't sure. And I was in tears for the rest of the day, mm. just after, just after working on her body. And mm. I just felt so bad that and I, at the time I didn't have any resources or anything like that, but I mean, that's just the power of energy. I shared that just to say the power of energy. No, that's real. They, and they don't so to. when I teach, and not to go into too much detail, but Reiki, Reiki is three parts. But when I teach Reiki one, and this is why a lot of mental health professionals in particular, and I get a lot of massage therapists and physical therapists too, I teach self-care techniques to help you to cleanse your energy. That's one of the main things that I teach in Reiki one. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people that I work with are also very empathic as well. So right. like you, they That's take on other say. people's feelings. They're very sensitive to energy. So right. if you don't learn those self-care techniques, oh my God, I pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole thing with me because I'm an empath. So I am very sensitive to other people's energies. That's probably one of the other reasons why I don't like being around a lot of people for too long is that I, I, I pick up people's energy and depending on what it is, it will latch on to me. Mm -hmm. And so I have to be very careful of who I'm around, of who I let touch me, of who I touch, you know, because I'm a touchy-feely person, right? But, you know, I can tell when someone's energy is not really good. And it's usually those people, for whatever reason, that just want to come around you and touch of you. Of course, because you're good energy. Right, and that energy Just like you can tell, they can tell too. Man, that energy is so transfer and misery loves company, but I'm not trying to be that chick that you, you know, give you company. So that's very important too, for people to understand that, you know, have you ever woke, woke up and you just feel depressed all of a sudden and nothing's really wrong. And it could be an energy that you receive even over the phone, you talk to someone or, you know, it, it's just really real. And a lot of people don't think they think it's hocus pocus, but when you're an empath and you know that you're an empath, you know the power of that energy and it's it's um it's very stressful it can be stressful being yep. an empath because you're you gonna care. have to do more than everybody else and again yep. that's why the first thing i said is self-care is self right you have to know yourself if you're an empath that means you're going to have to practice more self-care than the normal person you got to okay all right <laughs> So it's time Illinois, to double she up. She's looking suspect. She looking suspect. <laughs> okay. All right. I told y'all this wasn't for y'all this time. This one was. <laughs> this ain't got nothing to do with y'all today. This was all about me. But okay, I got you. Cool. All right. Well, we we've spent over our hour time having great conversation. Right. This was fun. This was like a girlfriend's night out. Friday Night Live. So before hey. we go, um, I'm going to let the ride or die chicks share their business to let everybody know who they are. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> All right. Who wants to go first? Wow. Wow. I'll go first. All right. <laughs> uh, my name is Michi Renee. My business is um, the Unicorn Tribe. I am a life and business coach. 
I use a hybrid approach to help women um, be the best and unique versions of themselves by helping them monetize on their skills, gifts, and talents in fun and aligned ways. So if you are right at the start of your business, you have an idea and you need help getting it going, I am your girl. I can be reached all over social media under the Unicorn Tribe, and it's U-N-I-K-O-R-N-T-R-Y-B-E. Awesome, and you are, you, you, I need you to add a word to your description. You are okay. an intuitive oh, life yes. and business coach, okay? okay? There's a difference. There you is. are an intuitive. Life. That is a part of my, I'm a life coach and intuitive consultant, and I cannot tell you how many people will work with me just because they're like, oh, You're intuitive. I need you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important because there's Thank a life and business coach that knows what they're talking about because they've learned it or whatever. But there are certain people that we are intuitive enough to hear what you're not saying and be able to guide you and tell you what you need to do, even though you haven't expressed it or said it. Okay. And that's a gift. Okay. Okay. All right. Ayana. All right. Um, so my name is Ayana Maya and I own the Capacity Coach, which is a coaching program and a tribe for women to help them reclaim their voice. And is there, do I have feedback? That's okay. Sorry. Keep, going, keep it moving. Sorry. Okay. Um, and so my, my tribe focuses on a community of women looking to reclaim their voice and express it in healthy, unique, and principled ways. And so I work more specifically teaching them language development in terms of how to show up and then how to express that in leadership. Awesome. And how can we find you and connect with you? So I am on Instagram and Facebook at The Capacity Coach. And I am on LinkedIn as Ayana Maya. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Again, my name is Tara Jackson, aka Madam Money. You may know me as the personal finance expert and a financial consultant for many news firms. And yes, I have and am a personal financial coach. However, what you probably didn't know, or maybe you do know, is that I own a company that builds websites for small businesses. I believe that small businesses, regardless of their size, should look like Fortune 500 companies online. You should be able to have the professionalism, the responsiveness, and the ease of use to allow customers to give you their money. <clears throat> so we build websites for you. You can learn more about that at SRJ Websites. That's SRJ Websites with an S dot com. Scroll down to the bottom. Click schedule consulta consultation. Let's have a conversation about your new website. Looking forward to you. Avalora, thank you again for coming in and helping to remind me of my self-care. I did You're put in my home. mind today because I'm giving myself three hours and after 10 p.m. I am going to shut down. All right. At least I'm going to try. Y'all can DM me and say, you sleep yet? <laughs> We gonna be sleep too, so we can't DM you. You know I'm going to be online, right? So I'm gonna try not to stay up till one o'clock in the morning. Let me start there. I'm gonna try not to do that. Yeah, and then I'm gonna work my way down. Okay, but this has been so helpful for me. As for the reminders, I got homework. I know what I need to do this weekend. So thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for always showing up and showing out. Thank you everyone for watching. If you're watching a replay, make sure you hashtag replay and you share this with some force with another entrepreneur that needs some soulful self care. As always, I love you. There is nothing you can do about it. And don't forget, ladies, come on. Wash them hands, y'all. I love you. Bye-bye.